Hi, I'm Chaplain Larry Spielman. Thanks for taking time to listen to God's Word as it's presented here at the World Equestrian Center. We hope you'll be encouraged in your walk with the Lord. So let's get started. So um, I was thinking about memory and uh, how uh, memory is such a great asset in our lives. You know, we all have them <laughs> or we hope that we do anyway for a while. Uh, one of the things you, you realize with your memory, uh, how important it is when it starts to just slip just a little bit. And I can attest to that because uh, as I've gotten older, my recall just isn't, you know, quite as good as it used to be, or at least as quick as it used to be. Uh, it, it maybe take me a couple of days to think about something that I'm trying to remember, you know, before before it actually comes back into my mind again. But, you know, memory is really uh, something that God has blessed us with. And I think that, um, you know, one of the reasons that he did that was so that we could remember uh, the things that he's taught us and shown us. You know, horses have good memories as well. Uh, studies have shown that they have short term memory and they have long term memory, uh, just like you and I do. And uh, sometimes it's pretty acute. I mean, they can remember things um, for a long, long time. And uh, they a lot of times it has a great impact on how they how they act and how they uh, perform. They can remember good treatment and they can remember cruel treatment. Um, I was I was reading about uh, some of these memory issues and as far as horses go and uh, they were talking about one horse that was mistreated by somebody wearing a black cowboy hat. Um, and every time that horse would see somebody in a black cowboy hat, he would just, you know, get all upset and excited because he'd been mistreated by somebody. It didn't make any difference what the person's face looked like. He had a black cowboy hat on. And so that horse would get upset about that. And most of you all know that if your horse has a, a bad experience being loaded, uh, every time that he's that you try to get him loaded, they're going to have even more uh, issues. Uh, because they're just worked up over it and they remember this was a problem. They either got hurt or they were uh, scared or there was some issue uh, going on with them. So um, uh, we're, if you're watching this on video, uh, we're live here. So you never know what we're going to hear and see here in this in this arena. Uh, but anyway, let me just let me just continue on. So anyway, uh, they understand cruel treatment. They remember cruel treatment. They remember good treatment. Uh, sometimes if uh, they've they've uh, been away from their trainer or they've been away from their owner for a while, even when that person comes back and, uh, you know, maybe it's been months, could have even been years. The horses will remember them because they they have good memories. Uh, today is, or, you know, this weekend, uh, we're celebrating Memorial Day. Uh, we're reminded to remember, uh, you know, and there's a lot of things that we need to remember, especially this weekend, about the sacrifices that have been made that really even allow us to stand here in this place today. If it weren't for those sacrifices, uh, we wouldn't have the privilege that we have to be here. And so we need to reflect on those things that have been given to us as individuals and as, as a nation. And uh, remember that uh, we are blessed and God has blessed us in a lot of great ways. You know, the Bible has a lot of uh, admonishments or uh, tells us many, many places to remember. And uh, I'm not going to go down through all of them. We wouldn't have enough time if I went through every scripture. But there are just a few that I'd like to share with you this morning about what the Bible says about remembering. In Psalms 105, verse 5, it says, Remember his wonders, which he has done, his marvels and judgments spoken by his mouth. Think about this for just a few minutes. Sometimes we forget that God created everything, that what we have uh, that what we see, that what we experience all comes from God. You know, there's so many wonderful things in the world today. You know, our, our culture uh, seems so negative and our environment seems so negative, but there's so many good things that happen in our world every single day. And if we're not careful, we'll miss the opportunity to be thankful for the things that God's done for us and to remember that it's God that has placed these things in our life. All we have to do is just get out away from uh, town and get 
get into nature and, uh, you know, there's just something that that picks you up and lifts you just a little bit when you see all the things that God has created and all the things that he's done. It's time for us, I believe, to remember who God is and what he's done in our life and all of the things that he's blessed us with. And by that, uh, we'll start to look for the blessings instead of all the negative. We'll be more positive about the things that we see and experience around us. So remember that God is the creator. Remember all of the good things that he's done for us. Ecclesiastes 12.1 says this, and I love this one. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Now, I'm looking around here this morning and I'm not going to be judgmental about uh, uh, age or anything like that. Uh, I just say for myself, I'm a little past remembering God in my youth. But thankfully, I was taught about God in my youth and I understood his will and his plan for my life. But, but the Bible says, remember your creator. Remember God when you're young. And most of us could look back this morning and really uh, encourage people, especially young people, to think about what does that mean for you, to remember God when you're young. I spent a couple of weeks ago in a, in a, in a couple of series uh, talking about how important it is to teach our children when they're young uh, God's principles for their life. But really, young people, if you're watching or you're listening, uh, remember what God's plan is for you while you're young. There's a lot of benefits for that because one of the best ways that we can avoid regrets in our life is not to make the mistakes that create regrets. And, and if, you, if we leave God out of our life, if we leave his principles and his word out of our life, a lot of times we do those things that will bring about regrets. So at, when we're younger, if we will focus on what God wants for our life and the things that he has planned for our life, it will be much easier when we get older to deal with what's going on in our life. I know uh, you can avoid a lot of heartache whenever you will put God first as a young person and really follow what the, what the Bible says for your life rather than just living it any way that you want to. Because temptation will come along no matter whether you're serving God or whether you're not serving Him. Temptation will come along and you'll make choices that aren't good if you're not committed to doing what God wants you to do in, in your life. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's just impossible. Kids will be kids. They have to go through all these things. They have to experience all these things. Well, I want you to know this morning, I, I just believe that that's a lie. I've known too many young people who have made a commitment to the Lord Jesus and they lived their life according to his plan and his will. And they didn't go through all of those things that a lot of young people go through. And, and I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm just saying that it is possible. And there are lots of examples for, for people to look at, to know that you can make that choice when you're young to remember God and put him first in your life. It is possible. In Deuteronomy 8, 18, it says this, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth. You know, a lot of times we think that we're self-made, <laughs> you know, that we've that we've we've accomplished all this on our own, whatever we have, whatever we you know, whatever blessings that we see. And the Bible tells us to remember that God is the one who gives us power. He's the one who gives us health. He's the one who gives us opportunities to be able to uh, earn and make a living and take care of our families. Um, you know, it's important for us to remember that it comes from his hand. The Bible also says every good and perfect gift comes down from the father above. You know what? There is nothing that you and I have that God didn't give to us. I, I've shared this many times, but you know, every breath that you take, God allows you to have that breath that comes from him. Uh, a few weeks ago when I was in the hospital and couldn't get my breath for days, I realized, you know, how important it is for God to give us that breath of life every single day, every single second. Think about how many breaths you've taken since I started speaking this morning. You know, all of these things that we have, God has given us that power. He's given us those blessings. And it's easy to forget and believe that we are strong enough to do this on our own. And in reality, uh, God has given us these, these things that we need to provide for our families, to provide for our, our lives. And um, 
we really ought to live in a gratitude or excuse me, an attitude of gratitude, recognizing his blessings every single day. Don't start a day without thanking God that you were awake today. I have a friend that uh, he posts every single morning. I'm, I'm awake today. God has blessed me. I have life. I mean, he's got all kinds of posts that he puts on Facebook about how every day I have a blessing to be thankful for. And, uh, you know, that's really kind of where we need to live. Acts 20 verse 35 says, remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Man, that's something that we need to remember today, isn't it? I mean, remember what Jesus said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, most, most people in the world today are, are takers. I, I, I tell people all the time, there's only two, two kinds of people in the world, givers and takers. And most of the folks that you're going to meet are going to be takers and they're going to be consumers because that's the way we've we've our culture has designed things to be consumers. And, uh, you know, we we take things all the time. But Jesus said we it's better to give and uh, uh, allow other people to have to share with other people than it is to be on the take all the time. And, and I can tell you from personal experience that living a generous life is more blessed and more encouraging to me every day than if I'm trying to figure out how do I get this? How do I take this? If I'm thinking about how do I give my life away? How do I give uh, to those in need? How do I help somebody else? Then I'm the one who gets helped. I'm the one who gets blessed. You know, I, I, I tell people sometimes, you know, you try to help somebody and they say, oh no, don't, don't do that for me. I say to them, don't cheat me out of a blessing. You know, I'm going to be the one that's going to be blessed because I've been able to help you. Uh, You know, whatever it is, it might be monetary. It might be encouragement. It might be just spending time with people. But be able to give yourself away because it's better to give than to receive. Jesus said that himself. So so as we're thinking about this today, remember the sowing and reaping principle. You know, if you just sow a little bit, you just get a little bit in return. If, if these farmers that have been out there planting just, you know, went out in a 20 acre field and threw five or six seeds out there, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't have much to show for it next fall. But they don't do that. They know that it, for every uh, square inch of that 20 acres, they have to find the best way to put as many seeds as possible in there so that they can reap the harvest that they want to reap. And so for you and I, we need to be willing to sow lots of seed and, and really be able to have that harvest later on in life that God wants to give us. Colossians 3.13 says this, and this is another remember, make allowances for others' faults and forgive anyone who offends you. And listen to this, remember, remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. That may be one of the harder things that we have to remember, isn't it? That God has forgiven us in that we are supposed to forgive other people. Uh, Remember, Jesus said, remember, you've been given a lot of grace. Freely you've received, now freely give. So when, when we're offended, when somebody does something to us, Jesus is saying, you know, you have to forgive them because I've already forgiven you. He told a little story about a slave who was forgiven millions, all kinds of, of money. And, and this slave, once he had been forgiven, he went out and found a fellow slave and yanked him up by the neck and had him thrown in prison because he couldn't pay back just a small amount, just a few dollars that he was owed. And Jesus said, you know, that person uh, is, is a wicked person because he wasn't able to forgive somebody who just owed him a little bit after he'd been forgiven so much. And you and I, uh, the, the grace that God has given us to have freedom from our past, to have freedom from our sins, the grace that he has given us to allow us to have eternal life, all of these things, this, this great forgiveness that God has given us, we have to pass on to somebody else. You know, we've probably all here today, we've probably all had somebody hurt us at some time or another in our life. Uh, I, I can go back and point to a lot of things. A lot of times when somebody's hurt my feelings or just uh, done something that wasn't kind. And you have to respond differently than the world does. We have to be willing to forgive 
not always forget. I know that our memories keep bringing things back up. But, you know, I've had times in my life when I every time that I had a memory about being hurt, I had to say, I forgive them, Lord. I forgive them to keep reminding myself this is this is something to remember that God has forgiven me. I need to forgive other people and not take that take that with me all the time. Listen, you will be the one who will benefit most from forgiving somebody else. Uh, You know, if you don't forgive somebody, it's like drinking poison, thinking somebody else is going to die. You know, that's not the way it works. Unforgiveness really affects our life more than it affects anybody else. And so please, this morning, remember that we've been given so much grace in this life that we have an obligation to forgive others. And that's God's call for us. Hebrews 3.15 says this. It's another remember. Remember what it says. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled. What is the writer here saying? Remember to listen. When you hear God's voice, remember that you have this opportunity to to do what God has uh, impressed upon you. You know, a lot of people do hear God speak in a literal way, but a lot of folks just get an impression in their heart. The Holy Spirit maybe moves in some way that they know that God has spoken to them or that God has impressed them to do something. And a lot of times people will just uh, ignore that and not pay any attention to it. And most of the time, whenever I've done that, I've found myself in more trouble than I would have been in if I would have just listened to what God said. You know, how many times have you have you heard or been impressed with God's uh, spirit not to do something? You go ahead and do it and you're like, ah, I should have listened. I should have just listened. Why didn't I listen? You know, those are schooling opportunities to remember Uh, that God speaks to us and we don't want to miss opportunities to respond to him in a positive way and always say yes to whatever God is impressing us to do or speaking into our life to do. Don't miss that day today when you hear his voice. You know, we never know how many opportunities that we're going to have to hear God speak. I mean, we don't know how many times he's going to impress on us to do something, to be faithful to him, to listen to him. And so when when those opportunities come, we don't want to miss them. You know, we don't have any idea how many times God's going to draw us into a relationship with him. And a lot of folks, you know, keep putting it off. They know, oh, I I really I should I should really accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But I've just got so many other things that I want to do before I do that. You know, today, whenever God speaks, don't miss those opportunities to listen to him and to respond to him because his forgiveness is free. And when you have that opportunity to accept that forgiveness, accept it on that day. Don't put it off. Don't wait till another time. You know, you never know how many days that you have left to listen or have God speak into your heart and your life. And so today, with all of these uh, things that I've Uh, told you to remember from God's word. There's lots of others, you know, to remember. But I I believe that he's given us a memory for a reason. He wants us to follow his principles, not to forget. You know, you don't expect your horses to forget how to jump over uh, these hurdles when they get to them. You know, they've just learned that and they will do that because they remember what they're supposed to do. And you and I, as God speaks and as he moves into our hearts and and moves through his word into our lives, we need to remember how he wants us to live and live accordingly. So I'm going to pray for us today that we'll have good memories, especially good spiritual memories to follow God's will for our life. Father, thank you this morning that you uh, speak into our hearts, that you do impress us so many times with things that we ought to do. You, you remind us, Lord, through our memories of how much you love us and how much grace that you've given us. Help us, God, to be faithful to you in every area of our life. Lord, we, we just honor you today and thank you for the privilege that, you, that you've given us to be called your children. And Lord, today, maybe somebody is listening for the first time thinking, God has impressed on me that I need a relationship with him. Today, don't harden your heart. Don't turn away from that impression. 
Today, God, help us to honor you and allow you to be Lord of our lives. We praise you today for this opportunity. God, we're asking that you will bless our riders and bless our exhibitors today. Give them a great day here at the World Equestrian Center. In Jesus' name, amen.